Well, on Monday, Dan Holler, the town of Mammoth Lakes town manager, signed a proclamation declaring the existence of a local emergency. Let's face it, we've got a lot of snow. Now, tonight, the Mammoth Lakes Town Council will consider the proclamation as an urgency item and, by motion, consider ratifying the signed proclamation by council resolution. Now, town staff will make a presentation tonight at the council chambers regarding the needs of the town of Mammoth Lakes and the implications and benefits of this action. Now, the complete proclamation is posted on our website, sierrawave.net, and it does read in part, the town manager of the town of Mammoth Lakes does hereby find that conditions of extreme peril to the safety of persons and property have arisen within the town as a result of extreme weather, snowstorms beginning January 7th, and severe weather and snow accumulations on January 21st. The storm events have resulted in damage to structures, including Mammoth Fire Stations belonging to the Mammoth Lakes Fire Protection District within the town of Mammoth Lakes, requiring the need for specialized equipment to respond to medical and other emergencies and contracting for additional services to access fire hydrants buried by snow. Also, damages to private residences and propane systems have both threatened homes and left approximately 600, excuse me, 167 metered customers without propane. Town of Mammoth Lakes was required to find contractors outside of town to haul snow as storage areas were overwhelmed and resources from Mono and Inyo counties were not available in local snow removal snow removal operators were also overwhelmed. Also, that proclamation states that it is further proclaimed and ordered that consideration for a U.S. Small Business Administration disaster declaration for individual assistance is requested. Additionally, funding through the California Disaster Assistance Act and any and all recovery assistance the state of California pr can provide is requested. And again, that's the proclamation declaring the existence of a local emergency by Mammoth Lakes Town Manager Dan Holler. And again, the Mammoth Lakes Town Council will likely ratify that or approve that at tonight's meeting. And again, you can see that on sierrawave.net, the entire proclamation. Well, as many of you know, and as we just talked about, since Friday, January 27th, approximately 167 Amerigas customers along Old Mammoth Road, mostly west of Snow Creek Athletic Club, have been without propane service. Problem began with a leak and subsequently a fire at an Amerigas facility made up of three tanks and a control facility just west of the intersection of Old Mammoth and Waterford. Now, the effective areas include portions of the neighborhood on both sides of Old Mammoth Road from Crawford Avenue to Sherwin Street. Mammoth Lakes Fire Protection District took necessary actions and has been monitoring the situation since Friday. Now, the Fire Protection District reports Amerigas has completed a detailed inspection of the tanks and that those tanks have been certified by Amerigas to be placed back into service and that was expected to be completed by yesterday, Tuesday, January 31st. Now, Amerigas has already, according to the press release, contacted over 140 of the 167 customers to begin the necessary steps to restore service as well as individual meters and how the valves need to have snow removed and to provide access. Now each service needs to be shut off before Amerigas can recharge the system. Once all the services are shut off, the tanks placed back in system and the system recharged, Amerigas will begin the process to assist customers to restore service. Amerigas expects to restore service incrementally as repairs are made. Depending on how long it takes to make contact with customers and perform the necessary work, service was expected to be restored between today and Saturday. Now, if you are one of the affected customers and have not been contacted, we sure you have been, but you can contact Amerigas at 760-934-2213. And again, that press release and other safety tips from the Mammoth Lakes Fire Protection District posted on sierrawave.net. Well, Hawk, this, the town of Mammoth Lakes has installed a high-intensity activated crosswalk, that's known as Hawk, 
to improve uh, pedestrian safety at the Minaret Road crosswalk adjacent to the village. Now the Hawk signal is a push button activated pedestrian signal designed to the press release notes aid pedestrian crossing at a mid block crosswalk and reduce the amount of delays for vehicles. The Hawk signal differs from conventional traffic signals because it only becomes operational when activated by a pedestrian, allowing for normal traffic to flow unimpeded until pedestrians need to cross and also minimizes wait time for vehicular traffic. Data suggests the pedestrian activated safety devices led to a 29% reduction in total crashes, according to that press release, as well as a 69% reduction in pedestrian crashes that's a good thing as well as a 15 percent reduction in severe crashes and this was a before and after study done in 2010. now what sh drivers should know pedestrian hybrid beacons are only activated by pedestrians wishing to cross the street when you press that signal button if the lights of the beacon are dark vehicles can proceed through the crosswalk now flashing yellow lights usually last around three seconds during which the driver should prepare to stop. A solid yellow light indicates the driver must stop. And once the light turns red, pedestrians will cross. All right, flashing red lights indicate that there are no pedestrians in the walk. The driver may proceed through the walk with caution. And after the flashing red lights, the signal will go dark again and vehicles may pass through uh, the intersection again. There will be a test at the end of our broadcast. And you can see the town's website for more information. That's a good thing. We all know that. Got to be careful when we're driving around in Mammoth Lakes. And especially on US Highway 395, State Route 203, Caltrans notifying motorists, yes, that the deer, believe it or not, out and about in the Eastern Sierra. That press release notes that due to the snowy conditions, deer venturing out onto the roadways to escape that snow, motorists should watch for deer as they are commuting, especially during the dawn and dusk time of day. Slow down, we'll say that again, slow down and be vigilant. Among the ways to prevent a, a collision with a deer, uh, do we mention slow down? Motorists should take it slow, especially with the low temperatures and icy conditions. Watch for the rest of the gang. Deer pack animals rarely travel alone. Deer travels in front of you. Chances are there are more nearby. Once again, slow down and keep an eye out for more deer darting across the road. Also, as we said, timing everything. Deer are most active during dawn and dusk periods when your vision is most compromised, as those of us of a certain age can attest. Slow down and stay alert, especially after dark. Also, stay center on a multi-lane road. The center lane, your safest bet for avoiding a deer collision, as long as your local traffic laws permit it. Give the deer plenty of space, and if your vehicle does startle them, give them more time to react if one darts onto the road. And they also say stay the course. If you do see a deer, it's unfortunate, but brake firmly and calmly. And we know that's tough. Swerving could make you lose control of your vehicle and cause, uh, well, make a bad situation much worse. Not to mention in the press release notes, deer are unpredictable and you could swerve directly into their change path. Also honk, some re experts recommend that one long blast of the horn will scare the deer out of the road. Do not rely on hood whistles or other devices designed to scare off deer, the press release says. Studies have shown them to be largely ineffective at minimizing traffic incidents. If you would like some more information, Deer Migration, Caltrans District 9 webpage, dot.ca.gov. You want to get to District 9. And again, let's be careful out there. Uh, believe it or not, deer are crossing with all the snow. And getting information from the Bishop Police Department that Tuesday night at about 8.30, uh, Bishop Police Department Sergeant on Patrol noticed what the press release says was an agitated male in front of businesses on the 100 block of South Main Street. Upon contacting the man, the sergeant, press release notes, recognized him as Benjamin Bloom. While further investigating, the sergeant determined Bloom was under the influence of a stimulant-type drug. Bloom, sensing an arrest, challenged the officers, the press release says, and began fighting with them. During the intense struggle, the suspect attempted several times to remove the officer's gun from a holster. The sergeant and officers sustained damaged equipment and a minor injury. The 27-year-old Benjamin Bloom was taken to the hospital for a medical clearance and then booked into the Inno County Jail following charges, including felony threats, 
and or violence to deter police from performing official duty, resisting by force or violence, also felony resisting, attempt to take a firearm from a peace officer, misdemeanor, battery on a police officer. Now that press release notes that anyone having witnessed Bloom's conduct or this event, you are urged to contact the Bishop Police Department at phone number 760-873-5866. We'll be back with more news.